Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. In this video, I'm going to introduce AutoML, specifically AutoCurus. This allows you to use machine learning to actually make the determination of how you want to set up those hyperparameters, specifically the hidden layers and overall structure of the neural network. So let's talk AutoML. First of all, for those of you taking this as a course, are you ready to drop right now because I'm about to show you how the machine can basically do your job as a data scientist or as a ML person? Well, not really at, at this point. First of all, the auto ML is not currently capable of truly doing this exactly like a human can, especially a human with domain knowledge of the data. Now, there's plenty of startup companies producing auto ML platforms. There's so many of them these days. I'm convinced there's like a cellular automation generating auto ML platforms. There's just so many. But what I'm going to show you in this class is a couple of the free ones, a couple of the paid ones, and we're going to see what auto ML is capable of. So first, let's go ahead. I want to show you a paper written by Bojan Tungs, and I apologize if I mispronounced your name, but this is a paper that he wrote on Medium that I think does a really, really good job of explaining this. Self-driving cars, for example. They've often separated the hype of self-driving cars and talking about the levels of autonomousness, is that a word, that the self-driving cars are able to exhibit. And if you go to Bojan's Twitter page, and he's a major luminary, I would say, in the area of machine learning, just absolutely one of the top Kagglers in the world and works for NVIDIA. This is his paper, and I'll just briefly explain this. He talks about the six levels of auto ML, similar to the levels for a self-driving car to be totally autonomous. Level zero, you code your own ML algorithms from scratch in C++. I remember those days. They were not good. Level one, use of high-level APIs. SKLearn, Keras, Pandas, H2O. So think about it. By using Keras, by using these, these others, you are basically able to have some degree of auto ML. It's kind of like the cars. They started having auto, um, auto lock brakes, anti-lock brakes. Now they can even parallel park, these different kinds of things. And what Bojan is saying here is basically you're able to use one of these algorithms already pre-built for you, and you're kind of at the first level. Although for those of you who follow Bojan's writing, I'm surprised he doesn't list just XGBoost. He's famous for the hashtag of XGBoost is all you need, especially for tabular data. Then level two, we get into auto hyperparameter auto, uh, automation and tuning. This is kind of where a lot of these are at. Level two to three, I think, is where most of the startups are actually at. Then level three, you have automatic technical feature engineering and feature selection. There's a company called Dot Data that really focuses on that. They've got some neat, neat stuff. Data Robot as well. Those are two of my, and H2O are kind of my three favorites in the AutoML commercial space. Nobody has really broken into these. So automatic domain and problem specific engineering. So you really actually understand the what's going on. And machines just are not there right now. And then the full ML automation. This is where you just don't even need a data scientist. It can, it can interview the business user, figure out what they want, and just and just go. Otherwise known as the singularity. I mean, by the time that a machine would reach this, we've probably cracked general AI. So those are kind of the lofty goals. 
we're going to look at Auto Keras. There's also Auto SK Learn, Auto PyTorch, and then Teapot is, is also a pretty interesting mix into that solution as well. These are the free products that solve this space. Then there's also Rapid Miner, Dataku, Data Robot, H2O Driverless. All of these are various entries into the AutoML space. There are tons of these guys. Like I said, somebody has probably created a, a generative algorithm that, like a GAN, that you give it a random number and it spits out a AutoML platform that you can go start a company from. And here are some too from the cloud. What's nice about some of the cloud offerings is if you want to use one of these, you have to sign a multi-year contract with a company, you have to bring a salesman and, and come in. What I really like about the cloud platforms is I'm already married. I don't need to lock into some big giant contract with, with a startup company behind one of these when I just want to experiment with these and see where I'm going. That to me is one of the greatest offerings of the very metered services offered by GCP, AWS, and Microsoft. So we're gonna use AutoCaris. We're gonna download that same paper clips data set that you've seen from me before. Basically, we are counting the number of paper clips in a variety of images. I just basically download it and then create a data frame that has the actual clips and the counts. I need to load all of the data sets into, into RAM. Autokeras really, and they're evolving rapidly. They may have solved some of these. They don't directly support generators. I've tried to use data frame, data sets where the whole thing is not loaded initially, and I've had mixed, mixed results with this. I've had the best luck with AutoCaros where I have everything in RAM in a data set. That may have that may be easier now. The they are certainly evolving this product quickly. So this code loads all of the images into one big NumPy array, and then we create. And we, so the Y actually comes from the, the data frame. So that's the counts, the number of paper clips per image, and then X is the actual images. AutoCuras is very easy to install compared to AutoSKLearn, which is a lot more difficult to, to install. So your, your results may, may vary on each of these. That's all the installation process. It has a lot of dependencies. And then my code, I've set up several constants ahead. Max trials, this is how many different models you're going to try. It's going to try over and over and over in a very iterative process, different hyperparameters to solve this data set. So the more of these you put in, the more different neural networks are going to be created. Seed is, just gives you reproducible results. If you put 42 or something like that, you're going to see approximately the same results. Timing and race conditions sometimes put in some just inherent randomness into these that are not being expected. Then the validation split, what percentage of this data set do you want to use for validation for early stopping? Epochs, how many epochs do you want to train through? Now there's several strategies you can go here. I like to do a lot of maximum trials, but very fairly shallow. So the final neural network that this model actually produces is going to be not my final one. I'm just going to steal its structure and then retrain much, much more extensively, possibly on multiple GPUs or something much more advanced. And then the batch size, that's your just typical batch size, usually 32 or so is a common one for this. And here I set these up. We're using AutoCaras and it, we're just gonna use the image regressor. Now, AutoCuras, there's a lot to it, and there's a book coming out about it. I, I highly encourage you to go to their website, check them out. I could easily do an entire series of videos on AutoCuras, and I may do that as I start to look deeper and deeper into what this is really capable of. So we fit it. You can see the results of the final trial. It shows you how far it got there. I just did two trials just to keep this example executing relatively quickly. It will make use of GPUs if you have those available. TPUs are, 
it's there's several issues out there in its issue database related to TPUs. I'm not entirely sure how well they're really supporting them at this point. And then finally, we get through it. We can export the model. Model export in AutoML is actually a big thing. A lot of these companies, the commercial ones at the top, they will not freaking export the model, which to me is, is annoying. Top Kagglers can give you a one-pager, basically, uh, or multi-pager on a Jupyter notebook that reproduces their results. So if Top Kagglers can do this, the AutoML that is not able to be a Top Kaggler completely by itself, now many of the Top Kagglers use AutoML, they should be able to export the model. This is one thing that's great about the open source ones is they all typically export their models. So you can see the exact model that it came up with. You can see it's using ResNet 50 as part of what it's creating. And then it just further, further tunes things. So you can truly export the model. What I like to do when I do the shallow approach is I have it look at a lot of different models but not go very deep. I then take the model that it came up with and I will then use the weights that it already has typically and just fine tune further not really fine-tune, do, do a more coarse train of it for a much lengthier amount of time. So I'm basically just taking the structure that the AutoML algorithm came up from. I'm using it to search through the hyperparameters. And this is showing that you can truly load and save this exported model. Because even the AutoML, the commercial companies, I see most of them, they they're basically creating ensembles and other things of a lot of different models that they search through. So they're basically building proprietary walls around the free frameworks. But of course, your vendors do, and it only makes sense, they're, investi they're investing their IP and their, their capital into these. You want to build some degree of, of vendor lock-in to that. Otherwise, you'll lose your, you'll lose your customers quite quickly. But this is some of the advantage in the open source world. Thank you for watching this video. And if you're interested in other things related to this course, AutoML, Kira's Deep Learning, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow along with this course. Thank you very much.